Good morning, and this is Morning Rio, hosted by Ray Salazar, a three to four, 200 minute or so podcast of films that I review from 1938 to 2024, from yesterday, last week, black and white, Technicolor, infrared, you make it, I review it, indie, self-funded, major, you know, motion picture, you got it. Now, I never thought I would review this film, dude. I never thought I, I would even review a film with Lindsay Lohan in it. And yes, I am hitting the volcano bag. Shout out to Steph Tone of the Deftones. Tones. I'm here to review Irish Wish. Yes, dude. It's a Netflix film. I think it came out like a few days ago or so. It was on the TV and I was just like, no way. Is that Lindsay Lohan? I haven't seen her in the film in such a long time. Honestly, I don't think I've seen her since... I think Freaky Friday or Mean Girls. I don't know which one came first, but those were the, I think Mean Girls was the last one. But yeah, man, like that was the last time. Like I never saw her since. We don't know what happened. I know she went kind of crazy and all that crap. Anyways, it's not about Lindsay Lohan, period. But it's like a comeback in the sorts, right? I mean, she did a film with the same director of this film, Janine Damien. This film was written by Kirsten Hansen. And man, I've never heard of these actors here, like, never heard of these guys, man. Michael Damien, Brad Crevoy, Ed Spears, Alexander Vlahos, Ayesha Curry, Elizabeth Tan, and Jane Seymour. Dude, Jane Seymour in this film, honestly, she didn't have a lot of screen time. And you can tell that they were shooting her scenes somewhere far beyond different from where Lindsay Lohan and the rest of the other main cast was at. But... The screen time that she had, though, honestly, man, like, she fucking nailed it. I I, I got, I mean, it's an easy role for her, right? Everything's easy about it. I mean, it's not hard to play, like, a supportive mother type of role. But this woman, she, she nailed it, man. And honestly, the reason why I, I feel like a conspiracy boom, Xavier, if you're watching this, or list, actually, if you're listening to this, Xavier, my conspiracy is this. Obviously, Jane Seymour is has been in the in the motion picture business far longer than Lindsay Lohan. Well, let's just say entertainment. Period. You can't have a person like Jane Seymour and Lindsay Lohan at the same time in one screen in the same shot. Like, obviously, Jane Seymour would over you know overpower her, right? So. For Lohan's sake, you know, they got to keep her apart. And that's kind of fucked up, you know, because they could have got her together. Because this film is is not really written very well. It's not. It's 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 cheesy, of course. Honestly, my wife was telling me, like, you know, this is kind of like a Lifetime film. I'm like, you know what? You're probably, you are correct, dude. You're not, not probably. You are correct. Like, straight up. I felt like somebody at Netflix scouted a you know, a seasoned or whatnot writer from the Lifetime Network and say, hey, come work with us. Here's the bag. Far bigger than Lifetime, right? This film, this film is pretty simple. And you know what? The reason why I actually wanted to look at this film, Ireland. I like Ireland. I like the country. It's small. It's green. It, it looks like that the people who like live there seem like very um cheerful folks. I don't know the history about Ireland, but the land of Guinness, dude, and I love Guinness, and you see Guinness in the film, even though it's not really set in the film, but you see it there, you see the pints being poured, you see the pints being served to the local people, you know, of whatever town they're in, wherever the town sets in this film, look, I didn't care too much about this film, and I'll tell you why, like I said, very simple film, and I'll tell you why, but I gotta give the premise, premise, this is it, Lindsay Lohan, she's a book editor, right? She's partners with this book author, right, who's getting married. And it looks like the dude, the main dude, the book author dude, like, he kind of, like, just brings her along. Sort of like an assistant of sorts, right? More more an assistant than an editor. He treats her more as an assistant than as an editor. And obviously, Lindsay Lohan's like, man, I'm much more than that. But she's she can't, like, she can't stand up. She can't speak for herself. And that's, like, her thing, right? That's the... That's like her dilemma in this film, right? And for some reason, she's in love with this guy. Like, she has feelings for this guy. And, and she's so, like, not bitter, but so bummed out that, that he's going to be marrying some other person. And it's not like the other person is bad or not worth, like, worth it. 
it seems like she is and she doesn't get that so then one day she just decides you know I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna wish for me to marry this guy instead of her and, and obviously something happens in the film where she meets up with this person right who just comes out of nowhere we don't know who she is right but she's like basically like the god you know the fairy godmother of this film right and this oh my god this film look she wishes it and it comes true and when she wakes up from the day that she spends with you know with the guy and everybody else she wakes up as the woman who is destined really to marry this author guy and as time goes by it turns out that like this guy is not really the person that she would want to be with and because of the fact that she stumbles onto this photographer that she met in the real life where like you can just tell they click you know there's just something about these two where they're interesting to each other and obviously by watching this you already know where this film's gonna go right i already knew it she's gonna get with this guy at the end of the film she's gonna get with this guy like it is so easy to read this film which is why i'm just like ah, why did i even watch it but i watch it because hey man Lindsay lohan acting i gotta see if she can still do it and i'll tell you honestly if she had a better script you know, if it was a better film, obviously it would it it would be it would be great and easy for her to nail this film. She nails it for the most part, but I you can tell when when you see this film, I feel like it's not only her character who's awkward, but it's herself who's awkward. It's like I felt like there was no confidence, you know. There, I didn't see it, you know, and and maybe the director didn't do a good job to give her that confidence because honestly, man, like even I'm pretty sure even Lindsay Lohan would say like reading the script and i'm like man like what's up with this character like do i really gotta play this person like i hope i can add some things to my own to make this person seem less of a like a self-loathing book editor dude who thinks that no love exists and all that crap but like come on dude come on either way man anyways she wishes it she is somehow spend some time with the photographer and all that they click and then something bad happens to where like you know what like there's something going on between us and this has got to stop this has got to go oh so anyways knowing that they're spending this time together i decided to take a smoke break without even pausing the film that's how much i didn't care for this film it's how much i didn't care for the characters really like you can't get behind these characters like every character in this film is I mean, they're not dumb, but most of them are dumb because, like, I don't think in real life this would ever, ever happen, even in a, even in a fantasy type of scenario, right? Because most of this film is like a, a fantasy type of scenario, and that's the only thing I kind of like about this film. You know, it gave me that Freaky Friday vibes, you know? And, and honestly, this film's sort of a reminiscent of, like, a Freaky Friday type of thing because, you you know, you swap bodies, you also swap characters, and you got to live your life as that character. And then you realize stuff as you, you know, live from another person's point of view, another person's body, period. Overall, you, you just know how this film goes. You know how it's going to end. You know it's going to be a happy ending, too. It's a, it's a romantic comedy, you know, overall. And, dude, there is just some point, some moments in this film where, like, it is so melodramatic where they literally have to bump up the music to pretty much push the scene forward and that's crazy like and they're so self-aware about this like not the characters but like the film itself it's just like we know why we're turning this up we know why it's getting more dramatic and it just really takes away the film it makes me laugh my ass off my why was just shaking her head like you know like i think a lifetime film would have been better than that and that's saying a lot right yeah, man, I took a smoke break that honestly, I think it, it lasted like maybe like a good 10 to 15 minutes. I don't know. And then there was 10 to 15 minutes when you come back and sit down and watch it. I realized like, I guess nothing really happened. I mean, stuff did happen in the film that I can't really say because I didn't fucking see it. But you can kind of tell where it would go. Right. And I don't care too much to go back to even find out. But all I know is this. I just know what happens in the end. And that's what pretty much matters. And like, there's nothing really magical about this film. It's not a bad film. It could have been a better script, obviously. The cinematography is pretty good. You're showing the beauty of Ireland. I like the wardrobe. I 
do understand the fact why Lindsay Lohan's hair had to be red and not because you're in Ireland, but just the wardrobe that she was wearing is sort of in contrast to the natural beauty of Ireland. There's a lot of greens, you know, a lot of yellows, you know, not too many reds. So, and there's a lot of blue, right? Because, you know, there's blue skies, there's ocean, all that stuff. And you really had to separate, you know, the actor from your foreground and your background. And and if you're doing it with Lindsay Lohan, you got to do what you can to make sure that your eyes are always on her. And, and I will tell you, my eyes were on her. Obviously, because she's the main character of this film. But like, it's Lindsay Lohan. You haven't seen her act. Can she still act? Let me tell you, Lindsay Lohan can still act. I, I hope she gets better roles in the years to come or whatnot honestly like maybe in 10 years she won an oscar or she'll be nominated for an oscar or an emmy you know who knows it can go anywhere from this point right it's cool that she's acting again you know like she still got it for the most part she really does and i wouldn't mind seeing her in the next film but this one man look if you're a fan of Lindsay lohan just watch it just watch it if you like rom-coms if you like ireland watch it you like movies where you just want it in the background and they don't really make too much sense watch it but if you're a cinephile you know and all you watch is Emmerich Bergman then stick watching Bergman <laughs> you know you don't really want to watch this it's not a complete waste of time I will give this two and a half tokes or maybe two and a half bag tokes out of four honest number Honestly, I would give it almost a two, to be honest. Like, it's it's close, but you can tell that Lohan did try. The film did kind of try, but it's so self-explanatory. The only thing you're going to be interested in is basically seeing, like, nature, Lindsay Lohan, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening to this podcast. My name is Ray Salazar. Check out my website, morningshelffilms.co. You can actually listen to this podcast on that website or on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, all those other podcast you know, apps and sites where you can listen to podcasts. It's there. Even on YouTube. If you love YouTube, fucking subscribe to my YouTube, man, Morning Shot Films. Morningshelffilms.co. Check out my galleries as well. Next episode, I'm not too sure yet. Should it be another Netflix film? Another Lindsay Lohan film? Who knows, man? I want to give a big shout out to the film Oppenheimer directed by Christopher Nolan. I knew it, man. I knew it that this film was going to win it big. I'm kind of surprised that it did win the awards that it won. I really thought Barbie was going to get, you know, maybe at least two or three. I really thought that the zone of interest was going to get at least a couple as well. You know, these are very strong films, but like I tell you, man, like Oppenheimer is a very universal film. You know, there's a lot of films and documentaries that really touch upon nuclear war, stuff like that. But this film, as fictional as it is, based on real life, you know, like... What they're showing us is basically like a glimpse to what it is now as far as technology is concerned and, you know, like nuclear warfare, you know, like that exists now, you know, and it's existed since that and you can't go back from it and the world's getting scarier as time goes by. But guess what? We're still here. We're still watching films to get, to, you know, to not worry about that stuff so much because, you know. Sometimes life is really good, man. So give it all you got. Yeah, check me out and thank you.